what the fourth way calls identification can be detected in us in a this moment to moment urge uh, into forward motion to be moving forward into activity and into identity and into a sense of completion and fill, fullness and fulfillment as an identity, as a person who's alive and doing things. And yet what happens is when, when, we, when we follow this urge to, to always be forward moving, and this can be forward moving psychologically, it can be forward moving physically, it can be forward moving emotionally, or instinctively. In other words, as the fourth way says, it can be, it can happen in and through any of the four centers. But when it does happen, what also happens is that there's a move away from and out of the stillness and silence and equipoise of pure consciousness. And this is what gets missed. This is what's not understood. But what happens is the the four centers, or as some traditions call it, the body and mind, they get activated. Something in our surroundings or in our, in our mind stimulates the four centers. They start moving. They, they, their gears start moving. And as they do, they drag our consciousness, our awareness, along with them. And then what is called identification, this movement forward, starts to snowball. And it can very quickly snowball into momentum and often into fervor, into a fervent movement or fervent talking or fervent eating or emoting. Uh, and at the same time, a, a very fervent form, insistent form of resisting and opposing and trying to force things, trying to force events or force people or force ourselves in some way. As this happens, as we get more and more identified, it generates in us a feeling of a stronger and stronger sense of identity. And because of this, it seems legitimate. And rarely is it questioned, is this whole process of identification, how it unfolds in us and the consequences of it, rarely is it questioned as being something harmful or as being a serious psychological misstep. On the one hand, when we get identified, we feel a strong urge. It's a, like a, a, a feeling of necessity, of psychological necessity to interfere, to control and to steer events. You can think of it as you know, we want to push events along and force them to their conclusion, at least as we envision their conclusion and in the way that we want things to be, the way we want things to turn out. On the other hand, we may feel instead of this strong urge to interfere, we may feel identification as a strong resistance to events or to people or to what's happening in such a way that we insist on pulling back from what's happening and, and pulling back in the opposite direction. Both of these tendencies, to push and force on the one hand and to resist and pull back on the other, are the result of what the fourth way calls identification and what Eastern spiritual traditions call attachment. Whatever you call it, it involves our awareness being drawn into and then sticking to whatever it is aware of. And as a consequence, our consciousness, our awareness gets dragged along with our activities in unconscious form. We normally don't see this as something harmful because it fills us up with a feeling of identity, of self. It literally fulfills us with a sense of doing and accomplishing and existing. And even though this whole gamut of identification usually ends up causing us problems and psychological turmoil. We like it and we consider it normal and we don't see that the problems and the turmoil that we experience are, are due to this repeated identification. 
And because being identified makes us feel alive, we keep looking for more satisfaction, more fulfillment, through more and more identification in everything we do. But this never works because being identified consumes us. It consumes us in the very real sense that it consumes who and what we are at the core of our being as pure consciousness, pure awareness. Every time we get identified, our awareness gets pulled out of itself, out of the realm of itself as awareness, and into this funnel of fixation and determination and conviction and compulsion. And in the process where it gets lost to itself as pure awareness. This raises the interesting question. What would happen if we didn't get identified in small and big ways throughout the day? What would it be like for our awareness to stay home, conscious as itself, and holding on to itself rather than losing itself all the time and lapsing into the busyness of doing and controlling and interfering and resisting and trying to force things? The answer is that it would lead to a complete transformation of awareness itself. And this is the huge idea behind the fourth way principle of self-remembering. The true self of awareness, realizing itself and actualizing itself within itself. <laughs>